gosh, I didn't forget part of it, didn't I? Hmm. So I brought Graham in here because we want to talk to you about the results, okay? Sure. So um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the testing, and I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. But, okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph. I promise. Chris, I, I'm. I'm. I'm Chris, stop. It's time. I. Just I'm stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. I. I want you to take a deep breath right now. There's a reason you feel sick to your stomach, and when people hold stuff inside it makes you physically ill and I can just tell on your face I could tell you tell from the second you walked in that you were wanting to just come clean and just be done with this and I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't going to pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that and then you continued to stay knowing that you could at the end say you know what I just need to get this off my chest like I just need to tell you what happened we're not, we're not here to play games. We're not here to do any of that with you. We just want to know what happened. So can you start from the beginning and tell us what happened? Everything that I have told you, I did not lie on this polygraph. I am, I don't know how much I could, I could tell you right now. Like, I did not. It's, it's, not I even, it's not even an option right now because you did not pass the polygraph. I so I know you were being deceptive. So that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. That's the issue right now. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that. I've I know I know you want to tell us. I, I can I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is gonna do nothing for you. I, I know this. Like okay. I'm not like trying to like cover things up like it Yeah but you kinda are because in in no, it's normal. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are going to go, I don't know what you're talking about, I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. It's just like if you ask your kid, you know, did you write on the wall? And they go, no. And you're like, I, you have a marker on your hand. Like, I know you just wrote on the wall. And they're like, oh, okay. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth time. This is where this is where the rubber meets the road, Chris. Like, don't let this continue any longer, please. I, I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home. Like, but you know they're not coming back home. You know I, that. I don't know in the back of my head. I I hope they come back home. But you know they're not. I I hope they come back home. Mm -hmm. And I don't know they're not coming back home. Chris, Timmy and I are confused, okay? And here's what we're confused about. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah, I told you that we've got a lot of leads, okay? That wasn't a lie. I know. We know a lot more than you think we do, okay? And here's where we're confused. You're this great guy. I'm not just telling you that, okay? I'm telling you that because everyone tells us that, okay? We can't find anyone to say anything bad about you. Chris is a great guy. He's a good father. He's a good man. We're confused as to why you're not taking care of your beautiful children. I'm not taking care of them right now. Right now. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. I honestly, I do not know where they are at. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth.
we just can't figure out why there's two Chris's. Okay. We talked about that last night. Yes. We just can't figure it out. There's a Chris. Okay. If somebody asked me my fifth child routine, I would say, I don't know, go after them all. That's the truth, right? And so it is very surprising to me and it warms my heart that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag in the morning and you know just what to put in there and you know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident, okay? You know what the clothes to put in there, you know what they have for breakfast, you know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack. You can tell me the book you read to your daughters, okay? I know you love them and you're not faking that, are you? That's real, okay? There's a lot of guys who come in here and try to tell me that and I know they're lying, okay? Because they can't answer those questions that you can answer, okay? But you are here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about that, okay? That's you, daughter. I know. And this is very good. Keep I, 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 I'm not proud of it. I, I don't think anything like that could happen. I don't think I'd ever do it, but I did. I know. Keep going. And she accused me of it. I denied it. I, I, I she was on her, and I feel horrible for it. Like she was pregnant, and it was. I don't want. I didn't hurt her. I cheated on her. I hurt her emotionally. I cheated on her, and I feel absolutely f horrible about this. But that's what I've been holding. I think that. When I, w I didn't go to the Rocky again, I was with her. Okay. I went to dinner with her. Okay. Keep going. That five weeks I was alone, I was with her most, most of the time. Okay. You're doing a good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. And I tell you, I fell out of love because I fell in love with her. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, that's the God's honest truth. Okay. Who is her? So I, I don't want to get her involved in this. I don't want to ruin her life. Like, it's something, something like this. I don't want her involved in this. Okay. So can we talk about that a little bit? Yes. I knew that you would say you didn't want to get her involved. But I mean, I, just I, I, because you'd like she's, to take care of She's a wonderful person. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, she knew I was married, yes. And I told her we were going through issues, yes. yes. And I told her that, you know, we were going to get, you know, at the end, like, we were going to get separated. Like, once I figured out what that was, I didn't know what that was going to be. I know. I had no idea. I, I like, you know, I saw her, took my breath away, and I never thought in a million years that could happen. I know. I don't even think of a figure about um, like, but like, it was, I never felt that way about anybody, like, anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. Chris, that's not your fault. No, I'm, I'm, I, I no, 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 I'm just, well, I'm, can we do this? Um, I know you want to take care of her, because me, it's because you're a type of guy that takes care of women. It is. You took care of your wife, you took care of your daughters, you were very good at taking care, and you want to take care of her. So can we make a deal? I don't think this girl did anything to hurt anybody, but I can't walk out of here wondering. So can we leave her out of it? Okay. Get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. That was what I was holding back. Like I didn't know like what I did. I know, Chris. In the interview today, you weren't asked about infidelity. You were asked about that was I was holding back from last night. That's when not why you feel today. That's not how that works. You would have reactions to every single question, not just the ones that we talked about being important. Like the ones you wanted me to lie about, like is that what you're talking about? No, the ones about her disappearance yeah. and knowing where she's at and about what you about seeing her last. I was not lying about those things. So can, I, can I tell I you what I think? Yes. Okay. So I'm going into that interview today with Tammy where we strapped you in. We knew 
We knew all about Nikki. Okay? All about her. And you're doing a very good job right now because you didn't have to tell us about her, but you did. Uh, I could hold that in anymore. I know. I could, we could see it in your chest and in your eyes. Okay? Here's the challenge that we have. We knew about Mickey, and so we didn't need to ask you about her in the polygraph. We just didn't need to, because we knew. Okay? And so that's why we didn't ask you, because we already knew the answer. Okay? We're very, very worried about your daughters and your wife. I am too. Okay? So can I tell you, maybe um, based on the people that I've talked to, and Tammy's talked to, based on all the investigations we've done, based on your cell phone, both your cell phones, your wife's cell phone, Nikki's cell phone, okay? Based on talking with family members and friends and based on talking with everyone. Here's what we know, okay? And I'm not gonna lie to you right now, here's what we know, okay? Chris is a good man, everyone said it. Okay, I'm not just telling you that because I you know, wanna blow smoke here, you're a good man, okay? Nobody can fake answers about packing a backpack, nobody. You either pack a backpack for your kids or you don't, okay? This should have been the happiest time of your marriage. Okay? You and Shanann. This should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money. She's making good money. You're making great money. You both have a job. You have beautiful kids. You have a beautiful house. You're in Colorado. Clean air. Good people. Okay? And on top of that, you look pretty good now. You're pretty fit. Okay? This should have been the time in your marriage where you guys were happy and thriving and productive. Okay? And I believe that Shanann's the reason none of that happened. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. I think that she can do whatever she wants and you can't. Okay? I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, whoa, buddy. Okay? A woman that lets her man do all of the backpack packing and all of the cooking. I do all the cooking, but like she cooks like I yeah. do like some things here and there. Okay. That's because you're a good person, and I think that she started on the path to leave the marriage. Okay. It's ironic that we're talking about you and Nikki. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. Okay. And the other thing I think is interesting is, even though she is that type of person that's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids, here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Okay. And that's the reason why we want to give you an opportunity today to just to help us find them, okay? Will you do that for us? I'll do whatever I can to help to find them where they're at. Okay. So when she asked you, do you know where they are, or are you going to tell the truth about where they are, you failed miserably. Okay. Why? I'm, I'm a nervous person. Like, every question I asked, every question, it felt like I, did, I wouldn't even say the right thing. That's not how the polygraph works. I don't I'm like I don't know like what it reads like through, I know she was saying about the uh, autonomy of of the process, but like I don't know where they're at. Chris, right now your dad's outside. He flew across the country to help him. Okay. You're lying to him. to everyone you talk to. And they all bought it. Will you please help us find your babies? I want to find them. I've told you over and over, I want to find everyone. Can we go back to that night? Yeah. You know that we have texts. And we know that there's an Alexa in your house. Mm -hmm. And you know that those are trained to record distress. Okay. You know that we know the content of Nikki's text messages and your text messages and Shanann's text messages. 
Okay. I didn't know you knew where Nikki was until tonight, right now, so. Okay. Tell us about that night again, and please tell the truth this time. I, I told you the truth. I, t um, I promise I told you the truth. Like, we woke up at 4 o'clock. I woke up at 4 o'clock. Got dressed, got ready. 4.15, me and Jeanette talked. About the house, about the separation. Did you guys talk about Nikki? She, she accused me of, like, all right, look, you know, is there somebody else? Sure. I didn't say. You denied it? Yeah. Okay. Because she brought up, like, you know, like, well, was there a six day Dallas charge at the um, end of the other night? Okay. Was there two of you? And then was with two of you, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. That's me. Okay. So it sounds like at that time there was maybe you weren't quite ready to just say, so I, I this is not everything. I couldn't, I couldn't say it. Okay. And we're already crying hard enough. I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't say that. Okay. What did you say? I just told her, like, I want this separation has to go. I want a separation. Okay. Was it her idea to sell the house of yours? She initiated the realtor the week before in an email. Why? Because we were talking about we, the marital issues. She's like, well, you can't live, afford to live on her own. Well, she can't afford to live on her own. I can't afford to live on her own. So she's like, we need it. Contact Ann. Okay. And see. And who did you contact? Well, she contacted Ann, our realtor. Ann? Yeah. Okay. Would Ann say the same thing that your wife con initiated the contact? Yeah. Okay. She would. And then on Monday, I was I texted her to see if she could, what she could do. Okay. And that's in there too. You fired and you had. Tell me about the pregnancy. Is that your idea or hers? She said it was about, she was about 80 20. Well, I was about. I was going to the pros and cons of it. Like after she got after she got pregnant, she told everybody that it was mainly my idea. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, it was. I, was, I wanted a boy. Did you want to get pregnant? Mm hmm. Okay. And then after the fact, she said it was mainly me that wanted, it and she was about you know, she was like seventy thirty against it at that point. Like she would tell her friends that. Yeah. And I was just like, what seventy thirty against it? Like why? Mm -hmm. Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense? I know. Okay. How is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? I promise you, I have, I have nothing on my hands that's, I did nothing to those kids or her to make them vanish. So tell me what happened then. I believe you that, that you did nothing on your hands. What happened? When I left, I mean, it's on video that I left and no, I was in my truck. I didn't like load anything into my truck besides my tools, my container, my book bag, my water jug, my lunchbox. Okay. But then what happened? I drove out of the driveway. No, before you drove out of the driveway. What happened with your wife and your kids? I didn't do anything with them. They were still in the house. Where are they? Where did they go? I don't know, sir. I really don't know. Your wife's not the type of person to vanish. I know she's not. She had ten things on her schedule that meant she was going to be there the next day, that day, the yeah. day after that, with friends, with a doctor. Okay? She didn't leave because she wanted to. Okay. That's what happened. I didn't do anything to her or the kids. Was she been an accident? I didn't do anything. Was she been an accident? No. There was no accident. I don't know if there was an accident in the house. I wasn't there for it. It's a big deal if it's an accident because we can work with that, Chris. No. And I there's think no, that's maybe what happened. There's no, I did not cause an accident. I didn't do anything to my wife and kids. Was it a misunderstanding? There's no misunderstanding. Like, we had that talk. There was a misunderstanding where I, I didn't tell her about the affair. Okay. I didn't. That, okay. that was a misunderstanding. Like, sure. Miscommunication, yeah, misunderstanding. Yeah. Good. But I probably should have told her right then, honestly. I mean, everything was out on the table anyways. Right. I should have just told her right then. But I didn't because I 
I just couldn't bring myself to do it. What was your plan? What were you going to do? I mean, how was the separation going to work? Like, once we got separated, I would get my own place, and then we, I mean, 50 50 split with the kids, that's what I was hoping. Mm -hmm. What about Nikki? Take it slow and just see if it, you know if anything develops. Like when I'm, you know, at my own place. Okay. I just I just find it hard to hear you talk about just having this emotional, you know, conversation with Shanann and you're bawling and crying together. And you have not shed one tear in two days that you've been here. Not, not one. And I help me understand that because I don't get it. You're these are your baby girls. And you have not shed one tear over them not being around. Chris, I I, 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 I lose my four year old in the store for ten seconds and I start to go panic. Panic. I have not seen any of that from you at all. Help me understand I, that. I love those girls. I I would never do any of this because I haven't shed a tear. Like you yeah, realize. no, that's weird. I, Is I, that I, weird? I, I, don't don't look into that. Like I don't love my well, kids. Tell me, my explain wife. to me. You're you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. But you don't cry that your two little baby girls. I'm are hoping leaving. they're still around. Some I'm hoping they're still. Somewhere. Yeah, but you alive. don't have them right now. You're I not know. reading stories to them at night. I know. You're not giving them midnight snacks. You're not giving them their medicine. You're not waking up with them in the morning. I know this. Like I. So that I, should cause you pain. It does cause me pain. But I don't see that. I, I don't see that. I want to see I, the Chris that cares. I want to see I, the Chris that, you know, feels bad about what he did and wants to you know, get this off his chest and be done with this and let us find your little girls so that they're not out there in the middle of a field or whatever somewhere. Like, don't do that. I, I love those girls to death. Then show us that. Show us that. Show this us this Chris, that not this Chris. I'm not, I'm not showing you that I'm, I'm showing you the Chris that cares about his girls and his wife. Just because I haven't shed a tear, it shouldn't make you feel like I haven't, that the love isn't there for them. It's weird. It doesn't I'm, make sense. I'm, I understand that. You, you have to. I I, I, I yeah. totally see where you're coming from. Trust me, like, there's nothing. I, just because Chris, I. Chris, people can be pushed to the point where they do something that they regret. It happens I'm, every single day. I uh, know. But part but of what makes you a man is the guy that goes, I really fucked up, but this is what I did. And I'm gonna pay for what I did, and I'm gonna tell you what I did, and I'm gonna be honest about it. Chris, we can keep talking to you once we find these girls, okay? But once we find these girls and your wife, right? No matter how we find them, no matter what condition they're in, we can keep talking to you. And you can tell us, guys, it's not as bad as it looks. And you can say, let me tell you what happened. I was never comfortable with you, Graham, or with you, Tam. No, I wasn't comfortable yet. But now that everything's known, now that these girls are found and Shanann's found, however they're found, it's okay. We can keep talking to you. Okay. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I, I have no clue. No, you would have known because they didn't leave the house. Like, well, did Shanann do something to them and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? No, no. no, they were at the house when I left. They were there. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. You were the dead. only way they could have left is in your truck. There's no way, because like, I didn't just throw them in, in my truck. That they, that you know your truck has GPS, yes. right? Yes. Because you even told your boss, like, yes. hey, I'm going through separation, I'm maybe staying yes. at a friend's house, whatever. You know that thing pings every 10 seconds? Yep. So we will know exactly you know. and where you went. And your company's giving that to us. I know. Okay. Are we not asking the right questions, Chris? No, you're, not. you're asking all the Chris, all the questions. What are we not asking you right? What What are we doing wrong? We're not doing anything wrong. Did 
she may do something. And she did anything to these kids. We both love them with all our hearts. There's no way. It could have been an accident. Something happened in the house that you know about. You failed the polygraph test, Chris. This is not about did you leave and your wife vanished and you didn't know anything about it. That was not what you were asked, okay? Okay. We know that something happened to all three of them. But I want to know, did something happen to these baby girls first that you had to take into your own hands and deal with? You had to clean it up for Shanann. Chris, you got to tell us. There's something that happened to these baby girls. Look at them. I know. Before he came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. I have no doubt. But we make mistakes. That's okay. It's what we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Chris, it seems like you're thinking about it right now. What are you thinking about? She could have. I feel like you cleaned up for her. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Which one of these has the breathing thing? Well, they both have inhalers, but she, she has the EOE. Encephalitis of the guys. Does she have problems breathing? And only like well, with her allergies and whatnot, like if she had anything nice. But she's had two of the endoscopies and everything in the surgeries I told you about. Do you think she had trouble breathing that night? And she had freaked out? and didn't want to live without her, her baby girl? So. Did you hear about the homicide that happened in Aurora where the guy beat that family to death with a ball peen hammer? Mm -hmm. The only person that survived was a three-year-old sibling. And that sibling grew up to be a total mess. No family, no mom and dad brother or sister just sort of by herself. She says, I wish I could have died with them. And there are times that people freak out. I've seen it. I mean, I've been in law for, for almost 20 years. I've seen it. Parents freak out and they're like, oh my God, like, I can't have my baby girls live without each other. They're best friends like twins they're you know they wake each other up in the morning and I understand um, that we had a mom in Castle Rock that suffocated both her baby girls she's like I just my husband was going to take them and she's like I just couldn't I just couldn't handle I thought I was doing right by them I thought I was saving them pain. And I get it. Why? Why was she saving them pain? Because she didn't want them to have to live without their mom. Chris, this is a weight that's going to be on you for the rest of your life until we resolve it tonight. Unless we can talk about this more tonight, this is going to follow you forever. I promise you, when you start talking to us, you will feel better. I know you already feel better about getting the Nikki off your chest. She's still, she's still like, involved for the news or anything like that. She can't do that. you got to help me. I know. Chris, we're giving you a lifeline right now. You need to take it. You need to reach out and take it. Did they look like this the night, the last night you were with them? She had that dress on, like... On the eighth or ninth, it wasn't this. But she had that dress on. Cause I remember I had the two buttons on the back. I take them off so I get her pajamas on that night. 
Did you guys make sure that they were warm when they left the house? Make sure they were warm. And they're they're always warm. They're they always have when they're in their beds. They're always warm. Okay. Were you guys taking care of them at the very end? Or they're always they're they're always taken care of. They're always they never miss a meal. them out of the house with their blankets and their animals. Like, that's because you cared. That's what a caring dad does. I mean, I'm always caring for these kids. There's no, nothing in this, in this world for my life. I believe that. I believe that, and I believe someone made a mistake, whether it was you or, you or Shanann. And you either cleaned up after Shanann or you made the mistake and, I mean, I want to believe that maybe Shanann did it and you felt compelled to fix this so Shanann didn't look bad. That's what I, that's what I want to believe. But I don't know, you're not telling me that, so it makes me think the worst. Like. You I did not do anything. All three of them? I did not do anything in this case. Not do anything. What did Shanann do to Tell us, Chris. Chicks Chris, are crazy. Can I have talk to my dad or something? Absolutely. Come. Do you want to bring him in here? No, uh, I just can't talk to my dad. Like, okay. He flew across the country. He crashed him. How about this? If we brought your dad in here, would you please tell him what happened? I just go talk to him. I've been here for like five, six hours, and I'm like, absolutely, Chris. Look at me, man. It's not going to feel any better. He deserves an answer. It's your best friend. There's only one person you wanted here most, and it's your dad. Yes. What would you tell him? I, I love him, and I don't. I just, I just want him to be by my side. Okay. He knows more than we do that you're a good man. And he knows as much as you want to protect you, um, your wife, Shana. I think he would tell you to do the right thing. Before we get him, can I go out there and talk to him? Well, I don't know that you want to do it out there because there's a lot of people going through the halls. Should we bring him in here? We'll step out. Okay. Do you need to be minutes with him? Okay. okay. Can we just ask a couple more questions? It seems like you're about to get it off your chest. Is there any way that you can help us understand more about Shanann and why maybe something happened? So that we don't get a bad picture about her. And what I mean is, what happened that night with her? As far as I got to talk to her? With the girls. Like when we were having that conversation in bed there. Mm -hmm. Like when I when I talked to her about the separation and the house and mm -hmm. she asked me about the affair and okay. and that's that's how that conversation went. Okay. I, she was distraught. She she had like mascara on her face, all that. I mean, it was it was emotional. Well how about this? If we bring in your dad Will you promise me that you'll talk to him? I'll talk to him. Okay. Will you promise me that you'll tell him everything? Would it be easier if you told him and he told us? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's going to be easier or not. I tend to think it's not. I think you're the type of guy that needs to take responsibility because you always have taken responsibility. You've always made the right choice. 
So I guess I'm just worried that if we bring your dad in here, that could distract you. What do you think? Distract me from like talking to you? Yeah. I, I just I just need to talk to him. Okay. All right. I know you'll do the right thing. I do. I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, I think that you need to think a little bit more about them. Okay. And you need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him. You are his child. And he will not stop loving you. Never. Never. And this is not the last chapter in anyone's story. At all. Okay.
have uh, however much time you need, okay? Okay. Can we leave us in there? No. Uh, yeah. Yes.
had no, nothing else to do. I didn't know what to do.
Can you tell us what you told your dad? After that conversation. Water, that's fine. No, fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After that conversation we had, and she accused me of the affair, and I, she, in her heart, she knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. And she knew about the dinner the other night. It was too much for just me. monitor. Those covers were like pulled off and she was just laying there. Thank you. 
Kids are blue and they're gone. And I'm just like blind, just I'm not that person like just like she hurt my kids. Like I did the same thing to her. In your bed. And there, you know what to do is she's back and 